quick recap. We went on a motorcycle trip across the Americas. We left Canada back in August of 2019. We did make it all the way through the Americas and down to Ushuaia in Cerro del Fuego. And on our way back, we got stuck in Uruguay when the borders closed around us. Now, we've been in Colonia, a small town in Uruguay, for about three months. Elle, mm -hmm. we're about to leave Colonia, Uruguay. Not yet, we've got a few days. Yeah, a few days, but we've been here for a few months. So we're about to make another move. Yeah, it's official. Yeah. You gonna miss anything about this place? I am. It's like home. <laughs> We've lived here for three months. It's cold, so I'm looking forward to seeing new stuff, but I'm also a little sad to go. It's gonna be a bit strange. It also feels like the first step in going home. Well, back to Canada. How do you feel about that? I mean, I look forward to seeing family and friends. I look forward to seeing the Rocky Mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're going back to Alberta. I mean, if we can arrange flights and all that, which we still don't know, but we would be arriving back in Alberta at the best time, August. If we get there at that time, yeah. And uh, I think I'm not really accepting the fact that this trip is canceled yet. Yeah. Even though we've been stuck three months it's like officially shipping or storing my bike it's not something I look forward to no it was never what we planned but when we began thinking about how to get back to Canada step one in that plan was to get to Montevideo so after three months we packed up our little apartment in Colonia packed up our motorcycles and we hit the road. It was weird. I forgot how to pack. After being on the road for so long and packing and moving almost every day, I had a system, but I couldn't remember what it was. Well, and also we had a few extra things to pack. I had to pack a guitar. Mm -hmm. And a ukulele. That's right. Uh, this is my system for carrying my guitar. It's um, not perfect, but it's comfortable. That's the main thing. Is it the main thing? I don't know. What you doing, Al? Oh, look at what I've done to the driveway. Not bad. What have you done to the driveway? Dripped oil. Dripped a fair amount of oil. Uh, BMWs don't drip oil. You're rubbing it in. Yeah. This isn't helping. Yeah, 135,000 kilometers. She never dripped a drop. Hmm. Never even needed to top it up. Nope. Never even needed to check on my oil between changes. Well, you needed to check on your oil, you just didn't. No. I didn't need to because every time I did it just there was never ever a need to top up so I just stopped checking. Still a good idea to always check your oil. And she's gone. And as it turns out I was a little bit rusty when it came to handling a motorcycle because... Well here we are. You ready to go Elle? I was. Yep. So we just have to take care of one little thing. But we hit the road and we left Colonia en route to Montevideo and it was a cold ride. It was chilly. It was heated motorcycle vest weather. Mm -hmm. We got to Montevideo and we checked into our Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our place. Come on, this is our apartment here. This is our tiny little place here in Montevideo. There's a little bit of a stove, fridge, microwave we can make do. Bathroom, beautiful but small. Check out this lamp. We had to tie it up with some twist ties because when we were eating, you would just bonk your head on it. Now it's a little more roomy. It was lower before. Come on. So this second level was clearly added after the fact and the doors are too tall to accommodate the second floor. So there's this cutout here and on that side and for the stairs. So I don't know how solid this floor is. Check out how much wobbles when we just wiggle the floor. It's a little bit scary. <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> Back down? Yeah, let's go show them the uh, balcony. balcony. This is the best part. Come it's a bit noisy, hey, on the balcony? Oh yeah, there's street noise and um, car alarms to wake you up first thing in the morning. But today is actually not too cold. 
little bit of water. That's the Rio de la Plata. And that's the office of mail, so the post office. So, uh, what are your impressions? It's tiny, but it's groovy, and we have a great location. We can walk to the Plaza of Independence, we get to see downtown, the Rambla, which I think is the longest Rambla in the world, the Oceanside pathway there. It's pretty groovy. The reason we chose it though is because it's in a beautiful part of town. This is in the historic downtown center of Montevideo and we wanted to see some stuff while we were here. But I don't think there's much open. There are some restaurants opening up though, more here than back in Colonia. Yeah. Now, yeah. mm -hmm. what is happening? We're eating in a restaurant and I guess it's okay, but it feels really weird. Yeah. You see the lady behind the counter? She's got a face shield on. And our waiter wears a mask. And mm. lots of people on the streets here are wearing masks. Lots, like more than 50%. Yeah. It feels kind of like a guilty pleasure, right? I'm a little worried. It felt a little bit strange to be in a restaurant. Yeah, I had some anxiety. And it just felt strange and weird and kind of like post-apocalyptic, futuristic science fiction movie. And this is our life now. This is the world now. It's still strange and I'm not used to it. But the restaurants are open. We are eating out from time to time. We're wearing masks when we go into bookstores and things like this. Anytime you go indoors, that's just suggested. Mm -hmm. And we carry hand sanitizer with us and we use it every time we touch doorknobs or bump into other people or touch their hands or use the keypad on an ATM machine or a pay card. The numbers of COVID-19 cases in Montevideo and all of Uruguay are actually pretty low. Yeah. So the numbers are on our side. Yeah. In fact, there's been twice this week that two days in a row happened where there were zero new cases reported. They're doing testing, about a thousand tests a day. Um, they've isolated a couple spots, one near the border with Brazil that's high, but they seem to be taking it um, on taking care of it and getting it under control really well. I think right now in the whole country there are less than 40 active cases. So over 800, almost 900 that have been diagnosed but mostly recovered now. In the city where we are, less than 15 active cases in a whole city of a million and a half people. Mm -hmm. We met some new friends. We went to a flea market. What's going on, Jeremy? We're at a flea market. Yeah? How do you Uruguay. feel around all these other people? I feel good. I feel better if more than we're wearing masks. But. Yeah, there's quite a few people to be around, but this is what it's like in the city. Yeah. This flea market, you can find anything. Do you want a slide ruler? Do you want a shoehorn from the Second World War? Do you want a doorstop? You got it all. All of it. We saw a motorcycle shop. This, by the way, is the motorcycle shop that we might use to store our motorcycles, if that's what we decide, which brings us to the final section. Mm -hmm. And we figured out a bit of our plan for getting home. Option number one, ride our motorcycles home. Argentina has closed their borders at least until September 1. So the likelihood of us getting back to Canada by October on our own motorcycles is pretty low. Option number two, shipping, shipping our motorcycles home. We looked into shipping. It is incredibly expensive. And my motorcycle isn't even worth that much money. Option number three, storing the motorcycles here, keeping uh, them in Uruguay. We put our motorcycles into storage, but we would have to return to our motorcycles at least once a year to uh, renew our paperwork. Eventually, we would have to ship our motorcycles home, but storage would provide us an option for the time being. And option number four, sell our motorcycles. Which is not legal here in this country. Uh, at least the person who purchases it could never license it in Uruguay, so we would not get a fair price. So if I were to sell my motorcycle, I would might get about half of what my motorcycle is worth, but it would then save me headaches about flying home. It would save me headaches and uh, the expense of shipping home. So I might end up actually ahead in that situation after all. I was thinking about the possibility for my bike too. Originally my bike was worth a lot more. It's a BMW, but it's got quite a few kilometers on it and it's about eight years old now. So I'm not sure how much it's worth. I can't bear the thought of leaving it behind though. But it might actually be the best bet in the long run when we factor in shipping and all the costs involved. So we're probably leaning most of all towards storing the bikes right now, but still keeping the options open because we're not in a hurry quite yet to decide. We did register finally with the Canadian Embassy, which mm -hmm. in effect is just adding ourselves to a mailing list so mm -hmm. we'll get notifications if there's any change in the situation uh, right now like I say Uruguay is doing really well compared to their neighbors as far as COVID-19 so we're in a good position here 
So we might even leave Montevideo again and explore a little bit more of the country while we can. It's cold, it's chilly, it's not the best weather to be riding a bike, but there's still some beautiful places to see, so we might go check those out. If you have any recommendations for that, let us know. If you want to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, I'll leave links to that in the description below. And if you want to check out my books, I'll leave links to those in the description below as well. Motorcycle Therapy is a book, it's an ebook, and it's an audio book. So if you would check that out, that would uh, that'd be awesome. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. That's right. Just check in and see if you're listening, blah, blah, blah. Just check in and see if you're listening, nah, 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 nah. Just check in and see if you're listening, blah, blah, blah. Just check in and see if you're listening, nah, 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 nah.